Today's episode is sponsored by The Dark Room. Well, I guess it's time for another one. Another edition of gas station hopping and me struggling with my demons, which are mostly photography related. Road trips, they're good for your soul. But what if you don't have a soul? Well then, I guess listening to music about death is a good alternative. Enter Lord Huron, one of my favorite bands. If I had to describe their work, I'd say that they're somewhere between a polka band and, I don't know, ambient slaughterhouse recordings. I'm not really much of a concert goer myself, but they were performing in Denver in a couple of days and I wanted to be there for that. The problem is I don't live in Denver, but luckily I have this thing called a motorcycle and I've been yearning to do another ass grinding road trip like the one I did last year. More on that in a couple minutes once we cover some photography f ups that I made. Don't act like this whole thing is a bad idea. You've probably done something similar yourself. Driven hundreds of miles to see your favorite performer live. We've all done it, it's not that big a deal. For this mission east, I packed up some photography gear. After all, that's what we do here. And basic survival supplies for the roadhead, sorry, road ahead. Anyway, after kissing my roommate goodbye and a solid fist bump from my dog, I got ready to go. I had four days to get to Denver from LA, and for a lot of it, I'd be alone on the Honda, which I faithfully nicknamed Rusty, because all of her aftermarket bolts were pretty rusted out from riding through a hurricane last year. Getting out of LA was the same as it always is, traffic out the ass anywhere you go, but eventually I escaped from under cloud cover and made it out to the desert just in time to visit Meth Jurassic Park. Since it was my very first stop on a long trip, it was also time to figure out what on my bike would be broken already. This time, my custom hand-built-with-love windshield support that I've been trying to solve for a year was basically in shambles. Just like any typical version 2 of something, this one was far less effective than version 1, so I just have to ditch it entirely. Anyway, whatever. I figured I'd load up the Nikon F2 and get to shooting. I wanted to try something different, so I put in Rolly Infrared Black and White and used an R72 filter on the lens, which blocks all visible light and only lets infrared light through. Ah, the first photo of the trip. Notoriously always bad, and this one is definitely no exception. It always takes a minute or two to get in the zone. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Before this trip began, I developed a strategy so good that World War II generals would have to change their pants. Hear me out. Rolly infrared looks really, really cool when you shoot it and only capture infrared light. I mean, what else are you gonna shoot in the middle of the bright ass midday desert sun anyway? But here's the kicker. At the end of the day, Rolly infrared is just a black and white film. Just pop that infrared filter off when you don't have enough light and then bam. You have a normal ass 400 speed black and white film. It's super versatile, in theory. But man oh man was I f***ing up catastrophically and I didn't even know it yet. Okay, this image is, it actually is worse than it looks. Why? Well, let's start with the obvious fact that a visible light blocking filter on a TTL camera will block out any and all bits of light that we humans can see. That's right, the viewfinder was blacked out pretty much the whole time and I was kinda just guesstimating every shot I took and I think it kind of shows. I don't know how I didn't think about this ahead of time, but that isn't even the worst of it. If you zoom in, which God forbid you do under any circumstances, you'd realize that they are slightly out of focus. Why? Well, the gist is infrared light focuses on a different plane than visible light. Yeah, it's pretty trippy stuff. It's also day one stuff. Literally babies know this and I don't. Basically when you set focus, you're then supposed to twist your focus forward to the red infrared notch to account for this infrared focus shift. Not all lenses have the notch and to be fair, if you stop down to like F8 or F11, this isn't really a problem most of the time anyway. I was wide open the whole time because you basically have to shoot this film at ISO 6 if you're trying to only capture infrared light. Anyway, for better or definitely certainly worse, these images all display only infrared light, which is kind of a surreal look for the desert.
Uh, I think I'm good. Yeah, yeah, can I do the uh, crispy chicken sandwich? Yeah. Low on gas, I decided to pull over in this little remote desert town to find someone and siphon their tank when they weren't looking. Lo and behold, it was a cool little area with many abandoned buildings and I got distracted by my deep overwhelming passion for photography. There was someone else that pulled up in the same area as me, Jack, an older gentleman who was visiting because he said he used to be a trucker and he would eat here often because the people were great, maybe as recently as 1998. Hey, that rhymed. I'm a poet and I didn't even know that I was one. While Jack was right, time is truly a bitch as it passes, I was more concerned with shooting some absolute fuego images on my infrared film, which are all soft, like my entire generation. I don't think these shots are bad, I just know that they could have been better technically. For these dimmer interiors, I took off the R72 and shot normally at 400. After all, that was the strategy all along, right? Well, it turns out that they're okay. The strategy was a success, kind of. It's kind of like my own personal Normandy beach. Yeah, sure, it worked, but at what cost? Me, it's hot. All right, let's get to uh, this gas station. Thirty minutes. Cruising across the deep desert was certainly something. It's just a straight shot, honestly. I think the people who built the road probably threw in one little S-curve to keep it interesting for the drivers. Anyway, a couple miles down the road of the California border, I stopped in Salami, Arizona at this motel that was literally in the middle of nowhere. I honestly thought that it was abandoned when I first pulled up. But it wasn't. I was just their first customer in probably like a month. Thinking that other people would definitely show up later and that I wouldn't die out here alone at this derelict motel, I unloaded my pack and called it. For I had just done about 300 miles in the desert heat, and I was out of energy for the day. So yeah, the interior here was...
cool. It was hunting themed and seeing as how we were deep in the desert, far away from anywhere that I can imagine there being live game, I started to wonder what they hunt out here. After realizing it's people, which I am one of, I settled in and made my peace with the fact I wasn't gonna sleep tonight. Cool little hotel room. Um, definitely has a theme. Uh, that theme is hunting. You guys aren't gonna believe this. New Live Laugh Love dropped. It's Live Laugh Love version two. Live, laugh, hunt. 300 miles, 95 degrees, crosswinds. But I made it and I'm exhausted. Oh, there's a fly in here. Very interesting hotel. I think I would feel a little bit better if there's literally anyone else here. Oh wow, this is, must be the only place Google doesn't actually tell you the sunset. Oh, it's because I spelled it wrong. 7.30, okay, so that's in like two hours. You know what, let's take this opportunity and load up some color film. This year, I brought my Minolta Freedom Zoom Explorer EX in place of my Contax T2. The T2 lens is fixed at 38 millimeters, which can be a bit tight sometimes. This Minolta actually has a 28 to 70 on it and it's pretty sharp. So it seemed to be a better overall camera for who knows what I'll find out on the road. It's Memorial Day weekend. I saw so many people like driving with boats this way. And, like there were some people on motorcycles too. Like I thought for sure this place would be like filled up. Anyway, with the sun going down and the sounds of human hunting parties rallying in the distance, I, a frightened little film photography drifter who could disappear easily, grabbed my weapon of choice, the Minolta, and shot some abandoned shacks that were literally right next door. This first shot is the best of the set that evening, but that isn't really saying much. I do like the cactus shadow on the building. The lighting and colors aren't half bad either. Kodak Gold can be kind of hit or miss sometimes. There is a reason it's a cheaper and more discount film than the likes of Portra. I think the difference really lies in the cast of colors in the shadows. I was gonna go get some food, but if I was being honest with myself, I wasn't really that hungry. It was really more of like a necessity thing. I went over there and the lady was really nice. She told me they were closing in 15 minutes. So I wasn't gonna be that guy. There's nothing really around, so I guess I'm just gonna starve. Guess I can eat Tums if I get hungry. Precious solitude, I once thought so sublime Has changed my sense of what is real and what is in my mind I think I hear the voices of my distant family The laughter of my oldest friends, the years I haven't seen
Traveling alone, not as fun as you might think. It's better to have someone to like go through the, the experience with you, even if it sucks. Why am I alone right now? Is it because I burned all my bridges with my friends? Yep. The real reason that I'm doing this trip is because last year we did a cross-country trip on our motorcycles. Uh, me and my buddy Tim, and Tim's bike broke down south of uh, Minneapolis. He just had to leave it there over the winter. This year we were planning on just going to get it. But I told him I didn't want to go all the way to Minneapolis again, like, from LA. No thanks. I've done it. Basically I'm going to be by myself the first couple of days because Tim is in Minnesota and he and I are kind of converging in Denver where the concert is. And then we just head back from Denver. But I thought I was going to enjoy being alone. I don't know, maybe I'll get used to it. Apparently the breakfast here uh, slaps pretty damn hard. Things that I like about this hotel room. The interior design is inspired by Duck Dynasty, probably. Things that I do not like about this hotel. I am still the only person here. Look at that, there's actually people here today. Anyway, it was time to, as Walt Whitman once famously wrote, get the f out of there. So I packed up the bike and headed north towards the Grand Canyon. Eventually, I took a little break in Ash Fork, which is along Route 66, I believe. Caleb and I actually came here a couple years ago and shot it a little bit. It hasn't really changed too much since then, but after talking to some people in town, it sounds like land developers are starting to move in and build the place up, which means this abandoned motel probably won't be there for too much longer. So I was glad I can capture it on infrared film, even if it is a little bit soft. Anyway, just outside the canyon, or random desert gaping hole in the earth, whatever you want to call it, I had some time to kill before sunset. Made it. I think my brain's just a little fried. More fried than usual, maybe. All right, <clears throat> it's five o'clock, which means uh, margarita time, A. Hey. I'm heading into the park, into the Grand Canyon. For sunset. I feel like parking is gonna be a pain in the ass, but that's my problem, not yours. It's currently gonna take about an hour to get there, even though I'm only going like eight miles, and that's just because it's Memorial Day weekend.
one eternity later. Have an awesome weekend. Hopefully it calms down for you guys a little bit, huh? <laughs> By now it normally would. <laughs> really? But we can't Memorial keep up Day. with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Once I finally made it to the Grand Canyon Zone makeout point all by myself, just like in middle school, high school, the senior trip, prom, and college, I soon remembered that I'm out of shape and I wouldn't actually be able to get down the trail to the point that I was trying to get to. But the light was very inspiring and I went for a walk anyway with the gold and the Minolta. Especially because the trail had a Moscow Mule open bar at the end of it, at least based on my own interpretation of the sign. After placing my expensive video camera precariously on the edge of a cliff so that I got the angle of me squatting down to take a huge shot, I took some photos that weren't really anything special. Climbing back up to the trailhead start was where the real magic was. The light was starting to get pretty good, and there were a lot of people around to be my unwilling participants in my photographs. Like this girl. This photo is incredible, definitely a portfolio shot, and I knew it as soon as I popped it open in Lightroom. The lighting, the colors, and the sense of mood gained from the image are incredible. Don't get me started on those brown tones either, it just takes all the boxes on my portfolio checklist. Anyway, she caught me taking her photo and then beat the shit out of me, so I just decided to head back. Honestly, the rest of the photos that day kind of pale in comparison to that last one. But you know what they say, comparison is the thief of joy, and I haven't felt joy since before I started shooting film. It really isn't enough for me to just take a photo of a beautiful view. If that were the case, the Grand Canyon would be the perfect vista and I'd be flying through rolls here. A scenic view doesn't make an impactful photograph most of the time, at least to me. There are definitely exceptions. Ansel Adams seems to have figured it out, but I think for my work, I need some sort of subject. This shot really isn't anything great, but at least the subject here is this boulder centered in frame, and that's something. Anyway, photography philosophy over for now as the hydrogen lamp in the sky began its shore leave. Wendy's, uh, unfortunately, was closed. It's like literally right next door. So I went to this place next door to Wendy's. It didn't really have like good reviews, but I gotta say, honestly, that was pretty f***ing delicious.
I took one single photo here and honestly, I thought it would have turned out better. It's just kind of an informational overload of a photo. It's too busy. I do like the dark separation of the layers, which is all thanks to the miracle of infrared light, but otherwise, this is a photo I'll probably never show again. Anyway, I left that spot and rode with my e-brake on for like 15 feet in front of another motorcyclist, which was great for my ego. But eventually I left the park and accessed the wide open canyon desert roads ahead. Eventually I made it to Cayenta and managed to find another hotel with virtually no one staying at it. But before I could take a huge trauma dump from the desert heat and settle into the air conditioned room, I realized Monument Valley was going to close the entry gate in about 45 minutes. So I did what I was advised against and hit the turbo on Old Rusty, like that one scene from the famous documentary Men in Black. You remember the little red button? Yeah. Push the little red button. So before you pay for your ticket, just want to let you know that bikes are not allowed on the city drive, okay? Did the bikes used to be allowed? They did, but then there was a lot of people who were getting stuck down there, and oh. it was too much of like a problem for us, oh. so they, 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 oh, they just decided not to do it. Totally understand. Anyway, after totally pretending like I wouldn't get stuck out there because I'm built different, I arrived at scenic Monument Valley where the lighting was good, but not yet perfect. I popped off some infrared shots and the occasional shots on gold that are fine. This shot has colors that look like butthole, but the concept was really good. I think if I turned off the flash, it would have worked a lot better. Ultimately, I decided it'd be in my best interest to wait it out for a couple hours until sunset, which with the miracle of editing can happen almost instantaneously. This shot is good. The colors are nice and warm, and I love the reflection of this guy to kind of add another layer to the image. I fired off some more shots with flash inside the visitor building, but I'm not a fan. I just can't seem to get the point and shoot flash look down. Looking back, I should have turned the flash off and just let everything be a little silhouetted. The underexposed shadow fall off look on film is actually kind of growing on me like an STD. Shadows totally dominate. Just 
yesterday out in the yard Bare on our backs when the sky was so dark Watching the satellites passing like dust in the air And speaking of planets in distance and time I reach for your hand and you reach for mine And I knew that wherever you were I would want to be there Howdy. Um, oh, dude, I thought this painting, I thought it was a picture of, like, um, like, COVID. I was like, what the f***? Why would they? It's just a picture of a flower. The only place in this town uh, that isn't a McDonald's that has food is, like, a gas station. And it closed at 9, and I got there at 9.08. So I'm just going to starve tonight. Maybe I'll go to McDonald's tomorrow for breakfast. Monument Valley was really cool, and I pretty much just camped out there until the sunset light was uh, started getting dramatic. I didn't really have much to do, but um, this guy, Marcus, came up to me. Marcus, if you're watching, thanks for being my buddy for, like, an hour or two. Uh, we got to chatting about Leica and uh, so on and so forth. He had seen my videos. Kodak Gold was finished. A good match for the desert, but for now, I was on to other biomes. Of the 36 exposure roll of gold, I got 20 keepers and one portfolio shot. What will become of us? Song you say, feelings too strong to keep hiding away. And the veil has come down and we stare at the blank hearted moon. We grow to the ground like two seeds. Before us won't pass and closing our eyes with no sunrise to come very soon. Your eyes seem to cast a mysterious spell. I felt the uprising, a furious swell while black with the sky of the walls kept counting the days. And there in the darkness we sat drinking. Four Corners Monument, where Utah, Nebraska, Colorado, and Gotham City all unite at one corner. I was in the area, and I always wanted to do that thing where I call someone while I'm standing in all four states. It's a classic joke that always kills. So I called Monica and told her to guess where I was, to which she replied, and I'm paraphrasing, I can see your location, you fucking dumbass. I know you're trying to be funny, but it isn't cute. I'd finally made it into Colorado, and the scenery was already starting to get a little greener as I began to head up into the mountains towards Uray. Somewhere along the way, I stopped at this. I don't know what it was. I guess it was probably a mine that was definitely leaking some sort of shit into the lake. I could definitely relate. After all, I had McDankies for breakfast and my time to leak was fastly approaching as well. But before I blew a McGriddle-sized hole in my pants, I had nothing in my Minolta, which needed to change. Now being in green and lush Colorado, I figured it was time for a Fuji stock that handles the color green quite elegantly. So I opted for Superior 200, the OG formula, not the Kodak Gold Fuji 200 bullshit. Somebody sent me an entire bag of original formula Fuji Superia, which like original formula for Loco, is quite hard to find nowadays, to my understanding. Thank you. You know who you are. Or maybe you don't. I mean, do any of us really know who we are? I shot the mine on a myriad of different stocks here for comparison, which is a convenient excuse for me when I'm being indecisive. So I did infrared, color infrared, and then regular old basic ass color. Which one looks the best? Tough call. But yeah, probably the superior. 
Riding through the mountains was absolutely breathtaking. Scenic vistas everywhere. Too bad I forgot to enable the front facing camera so you just get to look at my sweaty and clenched ass instead. What's the best way to shoot this? Let's find the light, baby. Anyway, as this jeep pulled up to steal my totally original, never before seen shot, I rode away in fear that it might be someone more talented than me. Eventually, I made it to Ure, a tiny little town in the mountains that some of our film photography elite beautifully shot earlier this year. And yeah, I don't know what these guys were up to, but damn did I want to get a beer with them. Hotel room is pretty dope. It smells really good in here. Well, not anymore after. Uh, never mind. I'm gonna go get beer and food and kind of walk around town a little bit. Probably bring the point and shoot. Yeah.
there isn't really sunset light in Ure. I mean, technically there is, but it's all on the mountaintops because the town kind of sits in this valley. So shooting was kind of a bust for me that evening. But speaking of busting, I called Caleb that evening because I had the story of a lifetime ready to go. I forgot while I was cruising today, there's a lot of bugs and they'll like hit the windshield, hit my helmet and stuff. And so I felt one hit my knee. And I, at first I thought, oh, it was a rock that was kicked up because it was a big boy. This thing splattered. It was huge. I don't know how big this bug was. It had to be a goddamn bird or something. But then I looked at it closer and I was like, wait, this isn't a bug. This is bird and somehow it landed on my knee while I was going 60 miles an hour. Rocking the uh, Shakira shirt today. The next morning, it was time to get going early, and I figured just about everyone at the hotel would love a 7.30 a.m. wake up. Today was the day I'd be cruising the Million Dollar Highway, a famous road up in the mountains known for how boring it is. But first I stopped at a scenic overlook of Ure to eat my gourmet hotel breakfast. But that wouldn't hold me over as I soon whipped out my infrared film of both varieties and power squatted to assert my dominance. Look at the lighting on that thing, it's killer. Oh my bike doesn't fall over. That's a freaking beaver! Oh, holy sh Anyway, while I was having maybe the best day of my life, I pulled over and decided to put in some effort for my photography along the edge of a cliff next to a highway. And honestly, I thought the shot was gonna be it. You know what I'm talking about. The one. The one that defines a career. The one that everyone has hung up in their homes. The one that dethrones the toilet shot. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. It was out of focus, as we already covered, and overall the composition wasn't really sitting right with me. Let that be a lesson to everyone out there that actually puts an effort to anything. It's never worth it. I gotta pee so badly.
that was it for the rolly infrared so now it's safe and you can stop squinting because the next roll will actually be in focus of the 36 exposure rolly infrared i got a lot of shots for sure none of them were really keepers and none were portfolio shots because technically they're all fucked up looking i got a hot pocket that exploded in the microwave One thing that you think is going to happen a lot when you buy a motorcycle is that you'll have a lot more street swag, which is kind of true, but mostly amongst old dudes at gas stations. Anyway, Northwest New Mexico was great to ride through. Very scenic, just about up until Albuquerque. But it was a long ride regardless, and I was definitely excited to see some familiar faces. My buddy Brendan, who you might remember from last year's thing, or the thing before that, or the thing before that, just bought his first house and moved in with his brother Tim like a month or so before I got there. Dear Lord, what a shithole. You made it. I made it somehow. You made it, man. Brendan has his own motorcycle channel, so go give him some love unless you're afraid of having a good time. Yeah, um, we'll put it in the back later. Uh, yeah, unless we'll, you want to put what it. What about the bike? Oh right. <laughs> Um, fuck. yeah, baby. Anyway, after waking up totally sober and ready to do some charity work or something because I definitely felt like a million dollars, we started to pack up our bikes for the road ahead. That's right, I'd be joining Brendan and Tim for my first ever threesome. You don't think it's gonna rain today? And Brendan was busy getting his arms ready. Eventually we decided to take heed of the words that Taco Bell's been preaching all these years and live moss. A litter box, but no cat, huh? So we headed north from there toward the Colorado border, making only a few crucial gas stops out amongst the crosswind. Quite a bit, and not in the fun way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you're like over adjusting, and then there's a pocket of no lens here. Yeah. yeah. Right when you pass trucks, I've noticed you get a huge yeah. yes. I don't think it was that Has this been recording the whole time? With Riders of the Storm drumming along in our heads amongst the rain, and yes, even lightning so fast that my camera shutter didn't pick it up, we eventually made it to the one and only Las Vegas, New Mexico. You know, 
Why are you guys milkshake shaming me? <laughs> so does that uh, bring all the boys to the yard then? Yeah, I only work on the time. Yeah. yeah. After something like 280 miles, we eventually made it to Rat Town, or whatever it's called, a smallish town on the border of Colorado. Man, the air smells so good. Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys were like catching whiffs of it. Yeah. Pretty much the whole, I once we got out of Albuquerque, yeah. super, super clean air. Future. <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> Internet. Inside the hotel room, things maintained relatively straightforward between all of us polite and well-mannered young citizens. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> yep, pretty <laughs> springy. <laughs> at least until we saw the haunted painting that would be watching us sleep that evening. Look at these two. <laughs> do, do her eyes follow you around the room? Yeah. Yes. Totally. It's fucking weird. It's creepy. I think they're both missing souls. Eyebrows. With nothing left to live for, I mean, uh, nothing left in my Nikon F2, I had to reload with some more black and white. Luckily, I had some Ilford FP4 with me that was given to me by my friend and former lover, B. Lee, a local legend. It was expired, like our relationship, but not by much, so I rated it at 100 ISO just to be safe. Somehow, throughout my illustrious career, I've never shot FP4, so I was definitely kind of excited to see what all the hype was about, as it definitely seems to be sort of a cult favorite in the community. I was also excited to remove the burden of the R72 filter and stick a yellow filter on in its place. something bold on a road trip is uh, tricky. It'd be like ordering a, it'd be like ordering a milkshake, you know, to go with a little lunch excursion. Yeah, who would do that? Psychopath, that's it. You know what, man? We, we gotta just fight, okay? <laughs> So this shot is, I mean, it's good, right? Very moody, and the flash did fire. Might be one of the best so far. I love the detail of the lamp inside. You know, this is, this is what you are to me, an old leathery boot. 
I think it looks nice. <laughs> it does. But you don't. <laughs> Man, could have really used that compliment, honestly. <laughs> Today's just been one of those days, you know? It's one of those days. Anybody gotta use the bathroom? I never know until it's too late. <laughs> what are you doing with that, all that lotion in there, dude? Uh, <laughs> uh... How's it looking, Captain? <laughs> a little damp. The next day was the concert and the day that we'd be reuniting with Tim, the other Tim. The guy whose bike broke down outside of Minneapolis, which I'm sure that he loves every time we bring that up. Before all the partying we would do, we had many miles to cover first. So we woke up early and hit the road after some complimentary breakfast. In the town on the hill where the apples grow Church bells ring every hour or so. I took a little walk just to see the ships coming in. Eventually we made it to Denver and I split off from Tim and Brendan while they went to see some family real quick. With time to spare, I couldn't think of anything better to do. So I got a tattoo of the very wise and powerful philosophy that I had heard earlier in the journey that like a demon, I just couldn't shake from my head. Afterwards, it was time to reunite with everyone, including Tim, who had just traveled long and far from Minneapolis with his original bike. We literally just pulled up. I saw you guys get off the highway. Did you? And I was like, <laughs> fuck, I'm at a red light. <laughs> you get stuck in that rain? No. Yeah. No? no yeah, we, we got rained on. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> got three cool guys. Jason. Got a cute little gang. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's the shot right there. Anyway, Tim was back on his bullshit already, so we decided to get drunk in the room as it was looking more and more like the concert tonight might get rained out. Is that your 50? It's my 85. After striking that perfect balance of blacked out and nothing else. We headed down to Red Rocks for some cardio that we didn't know we'd be getting. After we all threw up in the stairwell, Huron took the stage and it was a magical time had by all from what I don't remember. The sun rose up right above the highway. Black, blue, red, yellow, golden skyway. It's like the day that you jump the next morning we awoke to find someone not us had trashed our hotel room rockstar style believe it or not today was the day we were heading back west so we set our sights on a familiar place at least to me ure which would be a long day for sure but riding in a group of four definitely makes it go quicker i'm still stuck with these douches At the gas station, I picked up some thicker gloves because my hands were freezing their balls off. 
which ended up being a solid investment because we were going up higher into the mountains during a light snowstorm, which was admittedly not the best conditions for riding a motorcycle. The front view here of my GoPro is basically just about as much as I could see out of my helmet at any given time. Seeing as how I just got my motorcycle's license last year, and I've now dealt with 110 plus degree heat, a hurricane, and now snow, I can't imagine what else I could possibly run into going forward. I mean, I guess Godzilla is always a possibility. Yo, that was some crazy Dude, shit, man. man. <laughs> Visibility was pretty low. That being said, the photography gods decided to bless us all with a cool little moment of some grass-fed motorcycles crossing into view. I like these shots, they're pretty moody overall and capture what I feel like is a very American spirit. Speaking of America, we eventually came across some more construction as they were rebuilding some mountain roads. This was about as far as Tim and Brendan were going to go as they had to make their way back to Alba to Cracky. So the other Tim and I were back at it again with each other as we'd slowly make our way to LA over the next couple of days. After settling into the hotel and Tim already making me uncomfortable, we plan for the rest of the trip ahead. The next morning it was time to head into Utah, but the million dollar highway was right there and we couldn't let it go without one last sample. And 
what do you know? It was beautiful and in focus this time. Anyway, with lightning looming out in the distance, we trekked forward through Utah, hopping from one gas station to another and shooting some superior that I didn't really think turned out that good. Speaking of gas, there is a notorious 100 or so mile stretch in Utah where there is none of it, and we didn't really realize it until after the fact. Tim was fine, and still is fine if you catch my drift, but his bike was good too, for the mileage. Mine was cutting it pretty close, so I had to use the spare fuel canister, which luckily I had already filled up. But nonetheless, it was an absolutely breathtaking ride through some insanely wild looking geography, which I failed in school, which isn't really that important I guess. For now, just take a look at these butts. Eventually we made it through and wheeled into the first gas station we could find. I had probably like 5 to 10 more miles in my tank because old Rusty is a big old thirst trap. Right? That's what a thirst trap is. checked into our hotel and Tim was already almost naked again. After falling asleep staring at each other, the next morning we set our sights on Vegas. which would mean crossing the desert and dealing with the heat once again. But knowing we'd end up in the sleaziest city on earth, it was a quick ride. This feels shorter though, I think. We're going like 90. We're going like 100, bro. <laughs> Eventually we made it to Vegas for the next two nights, and sadly, if you kind of think about it, it kind of felt like home away from home. What? Something you want to say, bitch? That night after eating White Castle, something long dormant awoke in me. Diarrhea. And a will to finish off the Superior in the Minolta. These shots are fine, the colors on them are popping for sure, but I think I could have done them better to be honest. This one is 
probably the best. The next morning, the sun was peeking through the hotel window and I shot this, which is really good. Slightly motion blurry if you look up close because FP4 is 125 ISO and it was a dimly lit hotel room, but I still really like it, despite the fact that Tim bundled the pillows together to loosely resemble a woman and was making out with them all night, which, believe me, it was hard to sleep through. While I didn't get any footage of it, that evening we did head out to shoot some more stills out there, but this time on black and white, where we came across another film photographer. My favorite part of this image, you ask? This perfect framing by Tim. Anyway, all hangovers and stickiness must come to an end, and it was time to leave Vegas and head home. I can do an imitation of a man who's feeling good. I can talk a lot like someone who's not misunderstood. There's a drunk in every graveyard, there's a ghost in every bar. I'm drinking in the moonlight, wondering where you are. Give me just a phone call, let me know that you're okay. I see the curtain coming down for a net to I'm definitely going to get back on the bike soon and see more of what's out there. I'm itching to do it, or just itching in general. I don't know, I was just in Vegas. Looking back at all this footage threw me into an emotional whirlwind. It was so beautiful out there and I miss it. It got me yearning for the next one, which by the time you see this will be in about two weeks, but let's not jump ahead. In a couple weeks, I'll also be going to Photopia in Hamburg, Germany. So if that's something you're interested in doing with me, then the link is in the description. But before we wrap up the video for good and we never speak of any of this ever again, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, The Dark Room. If you've ever wondered who develops the film for all my videos, then look no further than The Dark Room, a professional lab trusted by many big names in the film photography industry to deliver clean and top of the line results for any variety of film stocks. If you've ever been concerned about getting your film developed not only easily, but done the right way by a team that houses decades of industry experience, then The Dark Room is the lab for you. With a team of professionals using dip and dunk processors paired with the high quality Noritsu film scanners that algorithmically deliver the film look, you can count on them to get the job done and the colors you want to see out of your work. Don't have time to run down to the nearest lab and wait in line? With The Dark Room, you just fill out an online form, write your order number down, drop your rolls in the free mailer, seal it up, and toss it in your nearest mailbox. The rest is taken care of. From that point on, all you have to do is wait for your scans to come in or your negatives to be returned to you. I personally love how easy it is to track my shipment from start to finish and getting the email that my order is uploaded and ready to be viewed makes any day a lot better. And that's why I've been using the Darkroom for four or five years now. If you have an order of film ready to go, head over to thedarkroom.com to get started or simply download the Darkroom app today. Anyway, the photos were great and the overall trip was definitely worth it for the amount of ass that was grinded off my ass cheeks from being on the bike that long. These shots are my favorite, but I really think the Superior was a standout performer here, especially the green stuff in Colorado. If I were to change one thing about the trip, obviously it would be getting my act together when it came to shooting the infrared stuff. I mean, a lot of these would have turned out great if I wasn't being so naive, but what's the point in dwelling in the past? Overall, the rolly infrared strategy, it kind of worked, but it also kind of cursed me. I now understand what Oppenheimer was going through when he developed the atom bomb, or like what DJ Khaled was going through 